Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Today I want to talk to you about the physiological and neurological changes in your brain that are actually causing you to become addicted to the narcissist and narcissistic abuse. I've talked about this before on my YouTube channel, uh, essentially saying, you know, you wouldn't tell a heroin addict to just stop doing heroin. And yet we often have that approach when it comes to unhealthy relationships because we don't see the drug. We don't, we don't physically see the chemicals that are being released in a person's brain that are flooding their system that are causing them to be addicted to this type of behavior. But just because we don't see it doesn't mean that these things aren't very real and that they actually aren't more addictive. You know, when your body is creating the drug itself, and I'm going to get into how exactly it does that and why it does that and also how to break it. When your body is creating that drug itself, your body knows exactly how much of each neurotransmitter, how much of each hormone you need in order to get that feeling of high. And then that feeling of calm, of belonging, of, of soothing. And your body is making this specifically for you, for each of you. And this was, this was happening to me as well before I got out of that relationship. So it doesn't matter, by the way, how smart you are, how many degrees you have, how many businesses you run. This type of thing can happen to anybody, mostly because your body is capable of creating the drug that you crave. So I love to research the way that your brain works, the way that our, our bodies are wired, and the effects that our, our natural world impacts our ability or inability to break habits. Um, I studied behavioral science for a long time uh, and, and I was a social scientist for the government before I started the Manifold Mind and became an entrepreneur. And one of the things that I looked at is why people are doing what they do and how do we get them to stop doing what they're doing or alter what they're doing, right? So one of my favorite researchers' names is Michael Easter. He's an incredible journalist. He goes all over the world and he also studies human behavior. And in his newest book, which is called The Scarcity Brain, he talks about the things that we do in modern world that were originally developed or evolved in us to keep us healthy, to keep us fed, to keep us away from predators, ha now has no outlet, now has no natural uh, uh, outlet for us. And so we create these experiences to keep us in this scarcity loop. And uh, some examples of this are, you know, scrolling through social media or binge watching Netflix and we know it's making us miserable. We know we don't want to keep doing it, but we keep doing it. And it's essentially that uh, that aspect of this that I want to talk to you about today. In ancient times, humans had to forage for food. They had to look for clean water. They had to work really hard to get shelter. And there is still a part of us that is wired that way. And so now we don't really need to forage for food, right? We can go to the grocery store where we have more than enough. We have more than plenty. We don't need to work for our shelter because we all have homes that we live in. We don't need to look for clean water because it comes out of our tap or we, we have a filtration system already installed in our home. And so instead, that wiring in our brain is still looking for outlets. And so while all of these things are great and they've made us successful as a uh, as a human race altogether, uh, there are some issues that this is now turning on us. And one of those ways I absolutely believe is through narcissistic abuse. When I was reading his book, The Scarcity Brain, I immediately identified this in my clients. This is exactly what my clients go through. Um, he makes the example about slot machines. These are the most played gambling machine or, or form of gambling in the US. Why? Because they're so unpredictable. We might get no reward, we might get a reward, and that reward could vary from a, a little bit to a lot. And this is exactly what's happening with, with a narcissist that you're trauma bonded to. You don't know what you're gonna get and there's a high in that feeling. Like, I wonder what it's going to 
to be like when I get home. And not in a way of masochism or sadism, but in a way of evolution that has taken place in our brains that is looking for our drug. Some people it's gambling, for some people it's binge eating, for some people it's scrolling on the screen, and for others it's that high of what happens when you're in that love bombing stage with a narcissist, only to know that you're going to get let down, you just don't know when or how hard, and it's very difficult to break this addiction. Another thing that I want to point out here is that for decades, researchers have been studying the effects of of unpredictability in humans and how unpredictability is a huge source of stress for most humans. They have done studies ranging from uh, getting their getting their participants in studies to turn over rocks and under certain rocks there would be snakes. So some rocks would have nothing, some rocks would have snakes, and some rocks would have like other type of creatures but not poisonous. And They've also done these same studies, but with shocks. So they've told half the group, hey, there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna get shocked at some point. And they've um, told other people, you're not gonna get shocked at all. And then they've told other groups, there's a 100% chance you're gonna get shocked, you just don't know when. And the most stress was experienced by the group who was told there's a 50-50 chance. They actually did that same study, and this time they gave the people who said there's a 50-50 chance, you're going to get shocked, a button that they could then shock themselves. And they would rather shock themselves than take the chance that they wouldn't get shocked at all. Because humans crave predictability. So this also feeds into the disruption in your ability to create or maintain healthy decision-making uh, atmosphere in your home. When you don't know what you're going to get, it feeds into the scarcity loop that is creating this high, this more and more and more addictive nature to the narcissist, to their behavior, because you don't know what's going to happen. And yet, on the other hand, it's making you even more heightened that there's an unpredictability factor here that is causing me all types of stress. So you have this concoction of all of these things going into your system at once. When I take people through a detox of the narcissist, I, I run something called the Narcissistic Detox Intensive, I focus on detoxing not only their environment from getting the narcissist away from them so they can have a, a, a space to cleanse their thoughts, to cleanse their own you know, emotional state, but also their physical body. Your physical body has held on to tension, has held on to words, has held on to the, the overall atmosphere that you have been living in with the narcissist. And as adults, if this is what's happening in your body, if this is what's happening to your system, and you, you, you are aware of the dynamic and that it's an unhealthy dynamic, imagine what this is doing to your children and your pets that are living in that same atmosphere. So in, in my intensive, I take people to not only detox their body, detox their thoughts, detox their emotions, and get back on track to thinking correctly, but also how to do this for their children, how to lead them through this process, because children might be feeling a bunch of different things, really big emotions, and yet they won't have the vocabulary. They will not have the words for describing what they are feeling. I wanna go back to what I was talking about with the scarcity brain and the scarcity loop in terms of the slot machines. In the book, Michael Easter talks about how the slot machine makers have actually engineered down to a science how often a reward needs to be given and how big of a reward it needs to be in order to keep people playing more and more and more. So this, should should tell you that not only is this a real thing that is happening, people have actually found ways to monetize it. I've often said on this channel, the narcissist knows what they are doing. They may or may not admit that they're a narcissist. They may or may not admit that what they're doing is damaging to you, but they absolutely know what they are doing in terms of getting what they need their energy supply. They know how much to give in order to keep you stringing along so that you'll be a, a supply source for them. And they know exactly when you're going to hit your breaking point. 
and what this does is it moves your your normal it moves your b boundary it moves your baseline more and more and more off center off your natural state of being I tell my clients and I tell people who watch my YouTube channel who are follow me on Instagram the amount of abuse that you're having today is the least amount of abuse that you will ever have in your life until you break that trauma bond and the reason is because like an addict I've, I've explained to you what you feel in this moment but the narcissist is also an addict the level of supply the level of attention the level of uh, uh, control and power that they get to assert over somebody is the least amount that it will ever be today. Tomorrow they will need more, and a year from now they will need even more. It is like any other form of addiction where today, whatever that level is that will get you high, get you drunk, get you whatever, it will not work a year from now. You will need more. Your body is going to grow used to having that certain level, and it needs a bigger hit in order to give you that same feeling. So when you detox from a narcissist, when you're detoxing from narcissistic abuse, and for, for some people, this is so normal because they grew up in it, that it can leave you feeling very depleted. It can leave you feeling very low, which is why if, if you do not do this with a professional who understands this form of abuse, they could be an excellent professional in whatever arena that they specialize in, but if they do not understand what it is like to come off of the addiction from narcissistic abuse, it can often lead you feeling like you're not doing enough, you're not doing the right thing. You know, you have to have that structure that tells you you can, you can lean on this person, on this group of people, on this program so that you can truly walk into your freedom because these lows is is like anything else when you are detoxing from a drug. I highly recommend that you read Scarcity Brain. It is an excellent book. His first book, The Comfort Crisis, is also an awesome book to read. And if you are ready to truly make a change to get free from the narcissist once and for all to make a different change in your life, then I want you to shoot me a text with the word detox to 512-677-9322. And if you are outside of the United States, I want you to send me an email. My email address is in the description below of this video. I'm a huge believer that when you have information and you understand how to turn that into knowledge and then you can turn that into action, you are ready to make a change. And so the po point of this video for me was really to add another layer of understanding to my audience so that you know exactly what is happening to you physiologically. You know, your body and your brain can be working against what you truly want in your soul. It can be working against your divine purpose in your spirit. And I think that when you have an understanding of that this can be happening and that this is a very real possibility for you, you're able to actually make a different choice. May today be the last day that you ever tolerate this type of abuse and you allow your own power to be used against you. So please check out this book, send me a text, shoot me an email, and I can't wait to celebrate who you will be a year from now.